Blue, a Miami-based smartphone manufacturer that creates inexpensive smartphones for the budget-conscious consumer. Their slogan, bold like us. In a time where budget smartphones are getting better with each new device, is the Vivo XL worth buying? How's it going everybody, this is Matt D, and this is my full review of the Blue Vivo XL. The phone released in 2016 by Blue comes with a 5.5 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 720p underneath a layer of Corning Gorilla Glass 3. The Vivo XL is powered by a 1.3 GHz octa-core 64-bit processor by MediaTek. That processor is accompanied by 2 GB of RAM and a Mali T720 GPU. The phone comes with 16 GB of internal storage that can be augmented by a microSD card of up to 64 GB in size. In terms of cellular connectivity, the Dual SIM Vivo XL supports LTE on bands 2, 4, 7, 12, and 17. That's good news for anyone in the US on AT&T or T-Mobile looking for an unlocked phone that'll connect to those two LTE networks. Also, like the OnePlus X, the phone has an FM radio. The Vivo XL is constructed of a premium feeling metal frame, which is a plus considering the $150 price tag of the phone. Adjacent to the earpiece sits a 5 megapixel front facing camera. Below the 5.5 inch screen, the phone features a set of capacitive keys. The keys are laid out in the exact opposite of the stock Android configuration. On the right hand side of the phone, you'll find the volume rocker placed above the power button. At the top, there's the standard 3.5mm headphone jack. At the bottom, the phone charges via a USB Type-C charging port. On the back of the Vivo XL, there's a 13 megapixel camera. Although the phone is built on a metal frame, the removable battery is secured under a greasy, slippery, hyperglazed plastic backplate. The moment I saw this, I instantly thought about the Samsung Galaxy S4. Although it's nice to have a removable battery, the plastic backplate detracts from the otherwise great build quality of the phone. The phone runs on Android 5.1 Lollipop underneath Blue's own custom Android skin. Blue's custom Android interface bears similarities to the various Chinese Android skins like Oppo's Color OS and Huawei's eMotion UI. Like the Android skins I just mentioned, Blue's user interface is not centered around an app drawer. Instead, the Vivo XL has an iPhone-esque UI with a simple grid of icons. The UI presents a clean, simple layout that a first-time Android user or iOS veteran could easily understand. On the other hand, anyone accustomed to the traditional Android home screen setup will find that the Vivo XL software only provides for limited personalization. While the Vivo XL doesn't offer an app drawer out of the box, Blue does offer a small collection of themes similar to what you'll find in CyanogenOS or Samsung's more recent iterations of TouchWiz. The built-in Theme Park app also includes a sizable collection of wallpapers, both still pictures and dynamic wallpapers. Chameleon is an interesting app that came pre-installed on the Vivo XL. Overall, it's an app that will create a theme for your device based on a picture that you take using the Chameleon app. While this is a nice addition to the otherwise bland user experience, I'd love to see Blue expand on its collections of themes in the future. The Vivo XL comes with two sets of gestures, one called Smart Screen Gestures and the other set called Black Screen Gestures. The black screen gestures menu offers a variety of gestures that the user can draw to trigger certain actions. Similar to what OnePlus has programmed into its Oxygen OS, Blue's software offers gesture support for opening the camera application, playing music, and activating the flashlight feature among other things. Blue even allows the user to program a few custom gestures. The Vivo XL offers a set of motion-based gestures in addition to the wider variety of on-screen gestures. For example, in terms of motion-based gestures, you can pause an alarm by simply flipping the phone over. On top of that, you can also set the Vivo XL to vibrate to remind you of missed call or unread text. Finally, similar to Samsung's Smart Stay feature, the Smart Bright Screen Smart Gesture will keep the display turned on as long as your eyes are directed towards the screen. Similar to the Dark Mode feature found in OnePlus's Oxygen OS, as well as a hidden feature in the Android Marshmallow System UI Tuner, the Vivo XL software includes an Invert Colors feature. This change in the display allows the Vivo XL to consume less power while the darker colors are easy on the eyes at night. In the Advanced Settings screen, Blue has programmed a feature into the software that supposedly allows the phone to automatically turn on or off at times dictated by the user. 
Unlike other Android devices, the Vivo XL does not present the standard Android quick toggles normally found in the operating system's notification shade. Instead, with a swipe up from the bottom of the screen, Blue has implemented a different set of quick toggles that bears strong resemblance to Apple's Control Center in iOS. This element of the UI gives the user access to the usual controls such as Wi-Fi, mobile data, Bluetooth, and screen brightness, among other things. There's even a button that triggers a fake phone call to help you avoid a conversation with that talkative friend of yours, but I see it as a novelty feature that didn't necessarily need to be built into the operating system. Overall, while Blue's Android skin for the Vivo XL is drastically different from what you'll find on most other Android devices, the Vivo XL does offer some neat, value-added features under the surface. However, I'll be installing the Google Play Launcher after this review. The Vivo XL's 13 megapixel rear camera with face detection autofocus is accompanied by a single LED flash. The camera will also shoot video in up to 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. After looking at some of the pictures I've taken with the Vivo XL, I'm impressed with how much detail the phone's rear sensor captures with a decent amount of lighting. Just know that if you view pictures taken from the phone at 100% crop, you'll begin to see a fair amount of pixelation. In terms of color reproduction, the Vivo XL's primary shooter seems to make the subject appear darker than in real life, using the default settings. Looking at the Vivo XL's camera software, the phone's camera app comes packed with enough shooting modes, filters, and manual camera controls to rival camera software found in the much more expensive Android flagships. For example, the software includes a shooting mode called Magic Focus, which basically allows you to achieve a bokeh effect, allowing the user to focus on an object in the foreground or background of a shot. In addition to that, Blue has added a Face Beauty mode, similar to the shooting modes found in other phones that will smooth out blemishes in a person's face. Finally, I also want to point out that the Vivo XL does offer a manual shooting mode, giving you control over shutter speed, white balance, exposure, and ISO. The Vivo XL's 5 megapixel front facing camera produces average still shots that don't offer much in terms of detail. However, it's adequate for taking selfies and posting them to social media. In testing the Vivo XL, I ran benchmarks on Antutu, Geekbench 3, and Quadrant. Antutu gave the phone a score of 35,652. After running benchmarks in Geekbench 3, the phone was given a single core score of 622 and a multi core score of 2,570. Finally, Quadrant gave my Vivo XL a score of 22,088. These aren't impressive scores, but I don't think Blue is targeting the Android Power user with this device. I tested the Vivo XL's cellular connectivity in the northern suburbs of Atlanta, Georgia with two applications, Speedtest.net and LTE Discovery. After running several speed tests on the phone, I got download speeds ranging from 9 megabits per second to 47.12 megabits per second, while the phone clocked upload speeds ranging between 2.07 and 17.02 megabits per second. According to the LTE Discovery app, the Vivo XL picked up T-Mobile LTE on band 4 and sometimes on long-range band 12 frequencies. To test the Vivo XL's gaming performance, I ran the following games on the device. Need for Speed Most Wanted, Leo's Fortune, and Asphalt 8. After spending about 20 minutes playing Need for Speed Most Wanted, the Vivo XL only got moderately warm while I experienced a minimal amount of dropped frames. If you saw my unboxing video on the Vivo XL, you'll know that the phone came with a cheap pair of earbuds. These earbuds are, well, okay. They're a little on the tinny side as they produce a minimal amount of bass. Personally, I'm not a fan of earbuds as I can never get them to stay in my ears. I'll stick to my Beats headphones or my Sony on-ear headphones. While testing the Vivo XL, I was able to consistently get about 5.5 hours of screen on time out of each charge cycle, which I found to be quite impressive. Towards the end of my review period, I really tried to stretch out the battery life as long as possible. With moderate usage, turning off various connections, and using airplane mode, I was able to get over 7 hours of screen on time over about 3.5 days. While the Vivo XL's display is only a 720p panel, I was actually quite pleased with the quality of the screen. I enjoyed watching videos created by other tech YouTubers and also browsing the web as the Vivo XL's panel created the saturated, punchy colors that AMOLED displays are known for. While Blue does try to differentiate its Android software experience from other phones on the market, I'm not a fan of the Vivo XL's Android skin. As an Android enthusiast, I feel that the phone's lack of an app roar detracts from the core Android experience. After all, Android's biggest selling point is that the OS allows the user a virtually infinitely customizable user interface. 
On the other hand, I think consumers in Asian markets might appreciate the Vivo XL software, as the phone's take on Android is akin to Oppo's Color OS and Huawei's Emotion UI. Again, if you don't like the launcher, this is Android. You can replace it. My other area of concern regarding the Vivo XL is software updates. I'm afraid that the Vivo XL's MediaTek processor may make it much harder for Blue to update the handset software. I've read several articles comparing Qualcomm SoCs to systems on a chip created by MediaTek. Qualcomm has created open source code for its widely used silicon. The open source nature of Qualcomm source code makes it much easier for OEMs like Samsung, LG, and HTC to create software updates for their devices. With MediaTek being a closed source operation, it is much more difficult for handset manufacturers to push out software updates to MediaTek devices in their portfolios. As time goes by, we're seeing manufacturers release fewer and fewer phones with removable batteries. While I appreciate the fact that Blue included a 3150 mAh removable power pack with this device, I'm not a fan of the slimy plastic backplate on the Vivo XL. Although we're starting to see more phones that charge via USB Type-C, it remains to be seen whether this new form factor will catch on. Over the past several months, there have been many reports of people's smartphones and laptops dying after a USB Type-C cable connected to the device draws too much power from the wall. Overall, if you're looking for an inexpensive Android smartphone with a large screen and a robust set of features, the Vivo XL may be worth your consideration. Especially if you're looking for a dual SIM phone that has a removable battery and expandable storage. However, my one big concern about this phone is whether it'll receive software updates since the phone's powered by a MediaTek processor. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.